my experiences with patients in the hospital with COVID-19 and how they rapidly got better when I took them outside. This is no surprise. This is nothing new. We used to do this all the time well before we knew about the science behind this, because people who were doing it, like Florence Nightingale, could see a benefit. And we've also shown you the epidemiology where we have both infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases throughout the season, heart disease, COVID-19, lower respiratory diseases, Alzheimer's, diabetes, influenza, kidney disease, all of these things have the lowest mortality rates just weeks after the longest day of the year and have the highest mortality rates just weeks after the shortest day of the year. And this holds true in both the Northern and Southern Hemisphere, respectively. With all of that in mind, let's look at this paper that was just published titled Longer Wavelengths in Sunlight Pass Through the Human Body, which have a systemic impact, which improves vision. And it's no surprise that Glenn Jeffrey and Bob Fosbury would look at vision since they're in the Department of Ophthalmology. They have the tools to actually look at that. But it's important to understand that because as we'll talk about, vision and the ability to see color specifically is highly dependent on very good activity of mitochondria in the retina. By the way, the retina is the tissue in the body with the highest concentration of mitochondria, and it's because of the work that it needs to do. So it sort of sets itself up as a perfect trial basis of seeing whether or not you're going to affect change in the mitochondria. Let's take a look at this paper. Here's the abstract, and I want to focus on what they say here. Here we show that infrared wavelengths from sunlight can be measured after they pass through the human thorax. That means the chest. We then select a prominent transmitted solar wavelength range, and that's from 830 to 860 nanometers. This, again, is invisible light. And they deliver it to the thorax of subjects in the lab in controlled 15-minute exposures with and without ocular involvement. So they basically will put a aluminum container over the head of these subjects to absolutely make sure that they cannot be exposed to this type of light. Clothing reduced wavelength intensity, but was not a barrier. These exposures were associated with significant improved visual function when measured 24 hours later, even in subjects in which the light was blocked from their eyes. So we're going to talk about this effect where you expose part of the body with infrared light and you actually get health benefits on another part of the body that was never exposed to that light. Our data show that longer wavelengths of sunlight penetrate through the human body and, consistent with animal studies, have the ability to improve function. While infrared light has been used on targeted tissues, its ability to improve distal tissues in humans has not yet been explored. This study also highlights the potentially important therapeutic value of sunlight whose longer wavelengths can reach key organs even through clothing and likely promote mitochondrial function, counteracting the decline with age and disease. Now that's an important point there at the end is as you get older, Theory of aging, specifically the mitochondrial theory of aging, states that ATP production in the mitochondria decreases by 70%, 70%. And so you can see here very clearly that if we can find ways of amplifying the amount of energy coming out of the mitochondria, we could actually affect change that might actually defy age. I want to mention a couple of papers that have been published prior to this one before we dive into it, showing very clearly that mitochondria in different tissues can communicate. This was a paper published in 2023, intracellular to interorgan mitochondrial communication in striated muscle in health and disease. And they said here at the bottom, myomitokinase such as FGF21, GDF15, and mtDNA can alter whole body physiology and systemic responses. This is something that is not out of the ordinary. I may also draw your attention to this article that was published not too long ago, showing that, in fact, human blood contains circulating cell-free mitochondria. In other words, free-floating mitochondria. Notice what they say here in the article. Yet, using flow cytometry fluorescence assays, Stevens et al. recently reported that at least part of the cell-free mitochondria of human and murine blood could remain functional. Indeed, part of the cell-free mitochondria identified by flow cytometry and mitotracker green fluorescence appear capable of maintaining a mitochondrial membrane potential since they retained the tetramethylene rhodamine ethyl ester probe, and such retention was lowered by the addition of the mitochondrial uncoupler. That's all to say that these things could actually remain active even though they're not in a cell, which is crazy. 